let's jump into problem 54a this is on the aging of receivables method when a customer owes us money we know some percentage of the time they're not going to pay and we have to estimate the amount that's not going to come in we have to estimate our allowance for doubtful accounts and to do it we've in the previous video learned the percentage of sales method in this video we'll learn the aging of receivables method remember at the base of this they're both guesses right we're both estimating you know what's going to happen in the future so nothing's perfect but this one just suits me better i look at it and i go yeah this matches my the way i would want to estimate but again different companies will do different things kill company shows the following information on january 31st 2029 the company's fiscal year end they've got accounts receivable 68 allowance for doubtful accounts in a credit balance and uh sales 55,000 of which are cash sales 981 of credit sales and it notes and this is where the aging of receivables comes in uh, a very common report a company will produce is an aging of receivables report and the idea is as the receivables get older you know more and more overdue we give those customers a harder time right we chase them right we go hey you owe us money you're three months past due and, and you give them a harder time so the computer will report it'll say these are your oldest receivables and you go okay that's who i'm getting my receivables clerk to chase so companies produce an aging of receivables report because it makes sense to know who's owed you for the longest and of course from uh, an accountant's also going to be concerned with collectability right as they get older they get harder and harder to collect and so when we're setting up an allowance for doubtful accounts doesn't it make sense to say well my oldest ar is going to be harder to collect than my newest ar so that's what this method is all about so we have sixty-eight thousand of ar it breaks down forty-two thousand of it is fresh uh, 15,000 of it is a month or older and uh, two months or older is 6,000 and more than three months old is 5,000. If you add that list up, you do indeed get to $68,000. And so the account, again, based on track record, these numbers will generally be provided to you in an intro class, but, you know, they were just based on past years past performance and if you've been selling a lot for a long time you have a pretty good idea uh, of the percentages that don't come in and in this case the account says well one percent of our newest ar isn't going to come in and you can see it gets less and less collectible as time goes by important though to remind you we don't know who's not going to pay we th hope that they'll all pay uh but this is just an estimate so 420 or forty two thousand dollars times one percent means we estimate that 420 dollars of this forty two thousand isn't coming in Fifteen thousand times four percent means six hundred dollars of this isn't coming in six thousand times eight percent 480 is our guess there 5000 times 25% 1250 is our guess there so adding this up 420 plus 600 plus 480 plus 1250 we are guessing that of our 68000 2750 is not going to be collected not going to be collectible that is our calculation and what we are calculating if you scroll back up to problem five three we calculate a number and that number is our bad debt expense with five four with the aging of receivables method we calculate a number that number is the ending balance of our uh, allowance for doubtful accounts so ending balance of allowance and it is a credit account it is always going to end in a credit okay so it says prepare the adjustment to allowance for doubtful accounts based on the information above well we actually have to do a t account first so step one or well step one is to do this calculation step two we got to do a t account for the allowance for doubtful accounts it was a thousand dollars and we're saying no the ending balance of the allowance has got to be 2750 it was a thousand credit it's got to end at 2750 as i noted credit so what's the difference here like how do i get from a thousand to 2750 what's the missing number right we're missing a number what number is missing well hope you're saying the missing number is 1750 
right? To go from a thousand to 2750 is 1750. Um, okay. Well, if our T account is missing a number, how do I make it so the T account is not missing a number? We do a journal entry. The journal entry is the same as it was for the um, percentage of sales method. It is, uh, we date it January 31st, 2029, debit bad debt expense, and we credit, well, just look at this, we credit the allowance, right? The, the missing number needs to go into that allowance T account. How do I get it there? Journal entry, I credit allowance 1750, I debit bad debt expense. 1750. So step three, do a journal entry. Step four, update or, or show how AR net is going to be shown in the financial statements. Remember, when we look at real companies, they don't say our accounts receivable, they say accounts receivable net. And we know accounts receivable net is AR minus the allowance for doubtful accounts equals AR net. Just as Apple disclosed right? Apple's AR, when they list it, they call it AR net. That means they've taken AR, their account receivable, minus any allowance for doubtful accounts. So AR minus allowance equals AR net. Our company's accounts receivable, $68,000. Oops, $68,000. Our allowance for doubtful accounts, it's the ending balance of the allowance, not $1,750. That's a mistake students make. It's $2,750. AR minus allowance is AR net. This is going to be 65,250. Remember what this is saying. Legally, I'm owed $68,000. I've done $68,000 worth of work that I haven't collected yet. Uh, but I know based on track record, some percentage of the customers aren't going to pay. We've done all this work and said, well, 2750 of that 68,000 isn't coming in. So how much do I actually think I'm going to collect out of the 68? I think I'm going to collect about 65. Well, this is the number shareholders care about. They don't care what you're owed. They care what you think you're going to get, right? 65,000 is really the value of the asset. So allowance is a contra asset account. It's a negative asset account. It always ends in a credit and it always reduces the value of our accounts receivable. So uh, one last point comparing this to percentage of sales method, the steps are a little different. Here, step one, you take a percentage of your sales. Step two, you do the journal entry. Step three, you update your allowance. And step four, you uh, show AR net. So you can see the steps are a little different. Here, take a percentage of your aging, rece uh, aging receivables. These two steps are swapped, basically, you do the allowance T account second, uh, journal entry third, and then calculate AR net. So if you have to do both, just know, okay, it's they're similar, but they're not the same. And, and it's a source of confusion, at least for my students. Maybe it's a source of confusion for you. Hopefully that helps to clear it up. C, on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2029, the company writes off a $900 receivable from a customer, record the entry. Writing off receivables when you know how to do it is not difficult. Feb 14, 2029, I want to write off a receivable. How do I do it? I credit the receivable. Credit AR from this customer. Heartbreak. Oh, can I make a heart broken? So that looks like a piranha plant in Super Mario. Uh, I was thinking because it's Valentine's Day. Anyway, credit AR customer, $900. Debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. That's the reason we allow for it, right? We're saying... I'm allowing for the fact that some of my customers aren't going to pay. Well, now somebody didn't pay. I'm using up my allowance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the video helped and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.